We have breaking news this evening out of Croatia, and it is all change at Jeroen as Golden Boot Halid Agul leaves for France with player of the season Elias Fillet rejoining the club. Now, manager Aussie Villain is currently speaking to the media. Look, it's a good fee for Halid, and uh, we wish him all the best for the future, obviously. But I've got to say, I'm very, very excited about our new look front line. Now, uh, do we have any questions? Uh, yeah. Yeah, mate, uh, Chad Hogan, the Australian and uh, Duran Times. Now, mate, uh, is there any awkwardness with Philip given some of the uh, the comments in the summer? I um I don't know what you're talking about, mate. Well, let me see here, mate. Uh, we've got Philip got cooked. Uh, we've got Philip's off the menu. And, of course, let's not forget you caught him a <laughs> traitor. Oi, mate, that was off the record. Yeah. Hi guys, I'm Aussie Villain and welcome back to Your Run on the Impossible Dream. It is Season 3, Episode 2 and today we are facing Varisden and Dinamo Zagreb. A little bit later coming back to what initially we were going to and that is because it is all changed. I wanted to get to the end of the transfer window uh, to be able to catch up on everything. So Halid Agul is leaving. Now not to January 1st. Uh, we sold him at the end of our window, not at the end, uh, before the end of the French window. So he's off to Dijon, uh, or however you say that. <laughs> and honestly, 850 grand, I'm okay with it. Was he good for us? Yes. Was he great for us? Yes, to be fair. But you look at those attributes, and he's going to hit his ceiling fairly quickly with us. And you can, we can see here that we're roughly getting what we're expecting to get out of him. I don't think he's the future of the club, even as a winger, as an inside forward. He's useful, but I don't think he's everything. And 850 grand, I think we're cashing in when his value is as high as it's going to get, if I'm completely honest. So he has left, but back at the club, as we all backtrack massively on the comments that we left, is Elias Fillet. He did come back in the end. Uh, we paid 60 grand up front, and then I think it's 60... 60 50 50 for games goals and if we get into the Europa League or something along those lines um we know what he can do he's absolutely brilliant isn't he so to get him back 60 grand up front is uh, is fairly nice uh, he's, he's well paid as well and 1500 a week as a star player but I think we'll all agree that is definitely money well spent now there's another guy that has joined us as well and that is somebody I am very excited about, Marco Tolic. Uh, he is absolute quality. Now, he has definitely got flaws in his game. Uh, work rate and positioning being two of them. Um, can't tackle. He's very much an attacking player, and he's not the quickest. But I think... I think we can all agree, technically and mentally, he makes up for any physical shortcomings. Uh, the flair, the composure are all brilliant. Ideally, the vision would be a little bit better, but he's still got good passing and technique, good long shots, uh, and good dribbling as well. Not the worst free kick taker, and we've got ourselves a penalty specialist. Penalty taking 17 with composure of 16, you'd expect him to be hitting you know, 90, 9 out of 10, which is 90% of his penalties. So he's 29, so he's a little bit older, but still very much in his prime, and he signed a three-year deal, so they'll take him through to 32, and at which point we might, we might even be looking to... Um, He's good, though, isn't he? He's very good. He's a little bit like Bakali, I think, except the vision isn't quite there. But otherwise, and the work rate is like, he's very different to Bakali in many ways. So his career to date, uh, he came through uh, early in his career at Lokomotiva. Uh, he then spent some time at uh, out on loan at several clubs around uh, around not even the league, around the second tier, it looks like. Did get uh, picked up by Dinamo Zagreb at one point, played a couple of seasons for them, and then has been out on loan again. I hope we can make this a home for him. So he was released by Zagreb at Dinamo, I should say, at the end of last season. And uh, yeah, now we try and uh, make Jeroen his home for at least uh, the next three years, where he will uh, dominate the league. So in terms of finances, we do. I tried to get uh, when the, there were bids coming in for a goal, and I did kind of force him out a little bit um, to try and make sure that it happened. Um, but yeah, we only had 5%. I did try to get that rise, uh, raised up, but the board weren't having any of it. So we've only got uh, 65 grand to spend, and we still had a little bit as well. So we haven't got much. I think it was 40 grand we got given to, uh, to reinvest. But uh, when the money does come in in January, obviously the balance is going to get a nice little boost. And I'm hoping that we'll be able to invest some of it into facilities and things like that. Now, we haven't had an update on facilities in a little while. 
So we have a look here. Now, our train facilities actually were downgraded at the end of last season because obviously we hadn't invested in them. And, and you know, it's, as technology goes, uh, it gets better than if you stay still, you're moving backwards, as they say. So, uh, yeah, so I would like to try and reinvest. I don't know if we can invest much into facilities, but certainly youth recruitment, things like that. Uh, just start and, and get the club building up a little bit off the off the field as well. But so uh, that'll all be for a January thing because we can't do anything with what we have right now. Now, there are four games to catch you up on since we left off the last episode after the first two games of the season. We left off top of the league, which is a very nice place to be. Uh, then we faced Gorica. Brandic opened the scoring in style. But we were pegged back immediately. And then fell behind. Before Page crossed for Gorgi to make it 2-2. Only for Gorica to get a third before half time. Trigrenich pulled us level again. Before Gorgi put us 4 3 in front. But only for a few minutes. So not our best defensive performance. This one, it was it was a crazy game. It was it was a, probably a lot of fun to watch as a neutral, to be honest. But in the end, uh, we took a point. It was away from home, so it's not the worst point. You can see we went uh, with this different formation. That's because Gorica tend to play quite narrow. Um, and I mean, it worked. It worked going forward, obviously fine. Defensively, though, uh, yeah, not our best for this one. Uh, all right, next up, it was Oziak. We took the lead when Page's cross found Gulji. And it was 2-0 early in the second half when Roberts crossed for Fillet. But Oziak pulled one back. Before drawing level. But Ilankovic slipped in Gorgi to make it 3-2. So we just struggled to really kill them off here. Now, one thing you may notice, this was, of course, Phillips' uh, first game back as well. Uh, Gulji's doing quite well up front, isn't he? Now, this is one of the main reasons why I was more than willing to sell a goal, because Gulji stepped in this season and he's found his goal-scoring boots. He's been absolutely brilliant. Uh, so Phillips and him up front were sort of the first choice. Pranjic, we knew, was going to be an option. And then once Tolic uh, looked like he was going to join... Just wanted the money for for a goal at that point. So yeah, very very good performance from us, more or less. Uh, just again, not maybe the greatest at the back, and uh, yeah, just struggled to, to properly kill them off. We did miss a penalty with Gorgi as well, going for his hat trick. So um, maybe that would have been one for Philip to take in hindsight. Uh, next up, it was a tough one. It was Hajduk split. We fell behind early in the second half, and then fell two 0 down in the 64th minute before a purser own goal made it 3-0. So I don't really understand exactly what happened here. We did go down to 10 men, which didn't help us after the second goal, uh, with uh, Bikanic getting himself sent off, but we just fell apart in the second half. I mean, the XG would suggest that we were more or less their equals, even in the second half, um, but they just suddenly started to, to put their chances away, and we, we didn't. So, yeah, what was actually you know, a fairly even game, it, it didn't, the score line doesn't do us any justice at all, but then equally, some of these match ratings, um, yeah, we, we I, I, don't, I don't understand exactly what happened. Uh, next up, it was Lokomotiva. We fell behind early. And it was 2-0 just after half-time. Before a counter-attack was finished by Persa to pull one back. And then Persa drew us level from distance. Before a goal scramble was finished by Phillip to put us in front. So what a brilliant comeback this was. I don't really understand. We weren't that bad in the first half. Uh, and then second half, it's like we got off to a terrible start. They got a goal to go 2-0 up, and it's like it, it just woke us up. We clicked, and, and off we went. There was no no stopping us at that point. So, yeah, very, very good. A person double, Philip getting himself on the score sheet as well. And, uh, yeah, Robertson and Phillip, the uh, two Istra players, of course, linking up quite nicely at times here, which is brilliant. Final game to catch you up on was uh, against Rejeka. We went ahead when Roberts crossed for Phillip. And that would lead moments later when Phillip flicked on for Golgi. Rejeka pulled one back. Before Mamic cancelled it out. 
and Rovers got out fourth before half time. Rejeka pulled another back late on. But True Greenwich quickly restored our three goal lead. So we were we were really good in this one. Uh, again, the XG tracker would suggest it was a little bit more even, perhaps, than um, than the scoreline would suggest. Uh, maybe there's an element of that, to be honest. But uh, yeah, we played we played really really well on this one. Phillip and Gorgi look good up top, so it made sense I signed somebody that wants to be a first team player to upset that. Uh, <laughs> Trogredic didn't start this one. He had a bit of an injury, so that we had uh, Ilan Kovic up there. Uh, one thing to draw your attention to at the back here: Zevich in the middle, Rakic uh, playing as the wide centre back, which is what we've been doing with this season, uh, even on both sides at times. Um, we have promised Zevich that, or promised Dinamo that he would be playing as a wide centre back. Rakic is not looking good in the middle. He does have the attributes to play on the right hand side of the three there. So we're trying that. And if Zevich starts to get up, they get upset with him, then we'll have to move him back out there and you know, see where we go from there. But ultimately, we've got to do what's best for us. And if this is what it is, then, uh, then so be it. So let's have a look at the league table. And well, look at that. Hope you don't get nosebleeds because we are top. Uh, yes, we've played a game more than uh, than Hajuk, but uh, they've got to play Dynamo, so there's no guarantee they're going to win that. And <laughs> it's going well. It really, I mean, defensively we're in absolute uh, shambles again, but that's okay. That's okay as long as we're banging them at the other end, uh, then that's good. So we've got top versus bottom first up against Varazin before we go to Dynamo. Now let's have a look at what we're doing here, and we are expecting a four-three-three out of them. And this is the team that we are sending out. So Todorovic goes in gold. We've got Bekenic and Rakic as the wide centre back with Zevic in the middle. Pejic and Rovis will be the wide players. Dashka, Persa and Tolic makes his first appearance for us as an advanced playmaker. Now I think in games like this he'll do that. Uh, Dinamo will be playing the second game. I'm trying to figure out the best way around getting him in the team. And I'm wondering if... Because Philip and Gorgi will start this one. But I'm wondering if maybe... Tolic and Gorgi or Tolic and Fillet as the advance forward. We'll have to kind of kind of see exactly the best way that uh, to do that. But that's something that we'll experiment with over time and, and find out what works. Uh, in terms of injuries, Mandic, our backup goalkeeper, is out with a broken hand. So that's not ideal. Um, yeah, three to six weeks. So we just got to hope we don't need a backup goalkeeper, really. We do still have... Uh, uh, where is he here? Zivkovic, he's not terrible, but, uh, you know, I mean, we just, we don't really want to have to be relying on backup goalkeepers because none of them are particularly good. All right, so we can see the team sheets here. Do we recognize any names on there? No, I don't think we do. Uh, all right, so what do we want to say to this? Our home form's important to us. Let's let's keep that going here. Uh, now, these ones are always a little bit tough. We are, according to the media and all that kind of stuff, we're still one of the favorites for relegation. So, yeah, I've got to kind of bear that in mind when I'm doing team talks. We're not, obviously. We're not going down this year. Uh, are we going to be able to uh, to make Europe? I'm cautiously optimistic, maybe. It's probably the nicest way to say it. Um, Hadrug and Dynamo, I don't think, over the course of a season, that we can beat them. Now, if they, if they go on European runs and they've got to split their time, then perhaps there is a chance that, uh, that we can kind of catch them out that way. Um, but I don't think we could. Do I think third is possible? Uh, yeah, I mean, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say it's not possible. Is perhaps the best way to say it. Um, but we're going to need to to keep keep players fit, obviously, as Dashka has a little bit of space on the edge of the area and puts it just wide. So uh, yeah, we are getting a little bit of a little bit of depth in the squad uh, and the goal transfer. Let me know what you think in the comments. As now, has Philip got himself an injury there? I just saw that uh, he popped up. Um, we have, again, we have options. Here we go with Philip. Across goal! And Gorgi has his eighth of the season. And he just cannot stop scoring. He's kept, well, he's basically forced the goal out of the club. And he's keeping Prandic on the bench right now. He is absolutely in stunning form. Nicely done by Philip. Drills it across goal. And Gorgi... He might get himself a league golden boot the way he's going this season. Absolute class. And I didn't show you goal of the season that you voted for last season. I'll try and remember to do that before the second game. Um, yeah, apologies I couldn't do it for the first episode. Just the way that I had to record. Um, you hadn't voted by when I was recording that episode. So, uh, yeah, here we go with Robbis. Floats one in. Phillips underneath it. Phillips powers the header in. Slides on his knees. And it is 2-0 early on here. And uh, now I was going to have a look if he got a bit of a knock. 
But uh, yeah, I mean, these front two look brilliant. And if Tolic can come in and click and, and sort of just enhance what they do, then, I mean, we don't have problem scoring goals anyway. But it really could uh, it really could take us to uh, to another level. Rovis now with a throw. We go back to Zebic. I'm really hoping Dinamo don't kick up too much of a stink about it. I mean, you'd imagine as long as he's playing, he's playing as a centre-back. You'd think they'd be okay with that, but um, yeah, we're going to have to have a bit of a rethink if uh, we do have to play him as that wide centre-back. As Roberts gets on the outside, is he penalty? Maybe. It's one of those where he's sort of tackled across the front of him. Now, did he get the ball or did he get, did he get the player? And VAR is going to check. VAR says no penalty. That's the second time now we've had one of those where it's no penalty. I shouldn't have complained, should I? So, uh, yeah. We've had uh, two goals from two shots. Which is uh, maybe making it look a little bit more comfortable than the game actually is. But certainly the highlights suggest that uh, that we're well on top here. Can Page whip a good one in? He can! Oh, it's a good save from the goalkeeper. Point blank. Bekanic getting forward now, but that ends that highlight. And you will notice, as I said, both the wide centre back, or well, both the side centre backs, I suppose, are playing as wide centre backs. So uh, as Tolic is there, well, that was a good signing, wasn't it? All right, uh, Trigrenic, on you come, mate. Do we have any idea what sort of potential foot injury, which could be anything from a stubbed toe to a broken ankle, couldn't it? So yeah, I mean, hopefully it's not too serious, but. Uh, I mean, we are paying him a little bit of cash as well, so... <laughs> but it's alright, we've got the Yagor money coming in now. We're going to be loaded by the time uh, by the time January comes around. Payich. Payich. Oh, I mean, it's not a penalty. We don't need to look at it. It wasn't in the box, Ref. Just give a free kick, please. Um, I was going to say something else there, and I've forgotten what it was now. They should be able to. If the opposition manager is just like, no, it's okay, it's a free kick. Surely. Surely we can just give VAR a miss. But 2-0 uh, at half time, arguably it could be more. But uh, I think we've got to say don't get complacent because as uh, as they say, 2-0, the most dangerous lead, isn't it? Because we're dominating. But if they uh, if they were to get a goal back, then suddenly it's uh, it's very much game back on. Which I'm assuming is why they say it's the most dangerous lead because you feel comfortable at 2-0. But, you know, if, they, if suddenly they score, one goal lead is nowhere near as comfortable. So I'm assuming that's why it's called the most dangerous lead. But uh, anyway, Rovis to Persa. Persa across the face of goal. And Payic doesn't get many. But he's got one there. Excellent, excellent strike. And it is now 3-0. And uh, was that fullback to fullback? No, it was Persa, wasn't it? Good ball across the area. And uh, just had to guide it on target, didn't he? Really good finish. So, uh, yeah, excellent. And we can see Rakic is playing okay as... Uh, yeah, you can see that. He's playing okay as that wide centre-back. This, this, these three in this way work the best for us. Um, it's just... Yeah, as I said, it's just whether Dinamo will, will let us keep doing it. As that is, well, surely a penalty. You're not going to get two of them uh, turned over by VAR, are we? Certainly the Varazin players don't look particularly pleased, but it's been given. Who's going to take it? It's Persa. And uh, I can't remember if I've seen him take a penalty before or not. Let's hope he can take one. He can. Only just. It snuck past the goalkeeper, didn't it? But it's his third of the season. And it is 4-0. Now, this is maybe a good opportunity to bring on our young centre-back, Graf, uh, who I've been trying to give game time to where I can. And this certainly would appear to be a game where I can. As Phillip is now injured. Well, this could be going very badly wrong. Uh, very quickly here. We'll bring Pranjic on. Uh, and we'll switch Gorgi back. But uh, if that's two long-term injuries to our two-star signings. Um, well, yeah. Needless to say, it's going to be. <laughs> it's going to be horribly disappointing as a ball is chipped in. And Gorgi can't quite find the target. We'll keep praising. Uh, I'm quite nervous now exactly how bad these injuries are going to be. We've got Pegic on the bench. Oh, another one. It's the goalkeeper. I mean, this is quickly turning... And we've made all our subs. All right. Well, who wants to go in goal? 
All right, so Page is going in goal. He has uh, one of the better averages to do that, so we will just be uh, more balanced. Gorgi will just have to go and fill in at right wing back for us. Uh, he has the best work rate, which is why I'm doing that. I mean, it does. I don't know who else to put in there. We can't make any more subs. So, um, yeah, if these if these injuries are long term, serious injuries, then we've got ourselves in a little bit of a pickle here. Uh, so everybody cross everything to make sure it's not. Um, yeah, especially with, I mean, goalkeeper with Mandic already out for a little bit. So we'd have Zivkovic and then Ormark. I don't know if Ormarkic is able to play in the league yet. You want to be 17. Uh, and I'm not sure if he has reached that threshold yet. Page got a chance to make a save. I mean, he didn't look terrible. It's nothing more than a consolation at 4-1. But, um... Yeah, we still we're just saving a bit of money on clean sheets there, I think, which is which is fine. As uh, yeah, I mean, it wasn't much. It was a good effort. It wasn't too much he could have done about it, I don't think. But uh, he loses his chance for a clean sheet, and well, I mean, we're over stoppage time that was allotted now, so there shouldn't be too much more to go here. And is Patriot have to make another save? I mean, he's not because he can't. And that, another tough one through a crowd, uh, crowd of players. But uh, it's now 4-2. But that should be the last kick because we didn't make any subs after the 90th minute. So, oh, we got a hand to that, did Page? I tell you what, he's not disgraced himself in there. He's not had much of a chance with the two shots that have gone past him. But uh, we had done enough. We were far and away the better team there. Now, these injuries, how bad are we looking here? So first things first, uh, we are still top of the league. So that is very, very nice. Got the best goal difference as well. I dare say that's down to the attack though, not the defense. So Page lends helping hand in Victorious Ferrison. Is that because he was on? Okay, here we go. We've got three, three potentially season defining injuries. Five to six, another broken hand for a goalkeeper. What are we, what's in our gloves? Tollich, twisted ankle, five, four to five weeks. Not great. Fillet. Okay, so Phillips not bad. He'll be back. Uh, Tolich makes his uh, debut. Phillips did quite well. And uh, yeah, so goalkeeper's the problem, isn't it? We'll have to see what we can do. But anyway, guys, wait right there. It is Dynamo next. And we're going to have our third choice man in goal. Okay, welcome back. We are getting ready to face Dynamo. We're hosting them. So maybe we could do something here. You never know. But worst case scenario, we are going to be five points ahead of both Hajuk and also Dynamo. Because if they beat us, obviously they'll go to 14 points. We'll still be five points clear of them. Yes, they'll have a game in hand on them, both of them, but they're playing each other. Only one of them can get maximum points. So we're in a really, really good position here. To, and again, I'm not necessarily looking at winning the league this year. I don't think I don't think we have the squad depth to do that. But I'd love to get top three, top four, whatever it is to get us into Europe. That would be huge. And uh, yeah, well, let's certainly hope that we can, we can do that. Now, goal of the season from last year. Let's have a look at the goal that uh, you guys voted as our best. So it came late in the season. It was actually a loss against Lokomotiva. But uh, yeah, I think we all voted correctly on that one. What a strike from Fillet. Now, another thing I just wanted to quickly draw our attention to is this guy, Dino Drenner Brigic. Uh, he is 16, but he has met the threshold of being talented enough to be able to play in the top flight. So he is on our bench and uh, we'll try and give him a game where we can. But uh, yeah, looks as though he's going to be very good. Just need to help that personality along a little bit, don't we? So... Yeah, very good though. First time we've had a youngster deemed you know, good enough to, to not be seven and be able to play before their 17th birthday. So uh, well done, Dion. Let's hope more from him. And let's have a look at what we're doing here against Dynamo. We're expecting a sort of, I don't know what you call that, a 3-4-3, three, three, I guess, perhaps. Anyway, uh, let's have a look at what we're doing. And this is the team we're sending out. So Zivkovic has to go in goal. We don't have any other options. Let's hope he is okay. Uh, and on the bench... Uh, Mary Janovic is going to be our backup goalkeeper. So, <laughs> oh, it's not good, is it? Uh, so, Bekanic, Zabic, and Rakic will be the rest of, the, of that defense. Page and Rovis, Dashka, Persa, and Trigunovic will make the start with obviously Tolic out. And then Fillet and Gulji will go up top. Gulji has eight goals already this season. Let's see if he can add to that. All right, so we can see the team sheets there. Now, to give you an idea of roughly the level that they are at, uh, you remember Zvitko, whatever his name was, we had in defense last season, not even on their bench, and he is still there. We could have loaned him back, but I thought we were okay uh, for centre-back, so I didn't uh, I didn't bother getting him in. But, uh, yeah, that's uh, that's roughly how good they are. First choice at, uh, at a, for us last season, not even on their bench this season. Um, all right, let's say that uh, there's no pressure on us here. 
uh, particularly, I mean, given we have a in- bit of an injury crisis at the back, I did look to see if there was an option to do an emergency loan, uh, but there was no seeming option to do that. Um, if Zivkovic was to get injured, we then don't have any goalkeepers who can play. So, I mean, at that point, I'm hoping we'd be able to, to do something. Uh, maybe, I wonder if I should look at signing a free transfer. Because um, it's, it's you know, we're about a month here without uh, without uh, Todorovic, was that his name? And uh, obviously Mandic is out as well. So it's it's not, no, no short period of time we, we're trying to, to get here without another goalkeeping injury. Uh, and yes, they're rare, but you know it it could uh, it could all happen to go wrong. And Tregreni, what is going on today? Um, okay, so Ilan Kovic can come in and uh, and play there. That should be fine for now. But uh, this is this is all going a little bit wrong, I've got to say. And we've got an attacking throw. It looks like Rovis whips across in towards the back post, and Payich has his second of the episode. Well, well, well. I think he scored in the first one, didn't he? He certainly has scored this season. I wonder if it was uh, if it was in the, the little uh, period in between episodes. But anyway, uh, Robis floats in across, and Payich. I mean, really, the the defender there probably needs to do a little bit better. But I'm glad he didn't. Now we are one nil up against Dinamo Zagreb. I tell you what, if we beat Dinamo Zagreb here, uh, I mean, do we start dreaming of titles? It's surely, it's surely too much too soon. I, I just don't think we're that that deep of a squad, that good of a squad. Um, and on the surface of it, you guys might think, what the hell are you talking about? But when you look at, at you know, when we get the scouting reports and there's guys that are sort of fringe players and, and like breakthrough prospects at Dynamo, for example, that, you know, would just be first team players for us. So, um, Oh, it's hacked away by Zevic. So I just, I don't think it's 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 possible. But um, yeah, we'll see. I'd love to be proved wrong, don't get me wrong. I mean, I'm certainly going to try and win every game we play. And if we, if we end up being good enough to win the league, then brilliant. But I just, I am a little, yeah, a little worried that uh, it's not going to happen for us. But we're, we're a lot less reliant on loans this season, which is good as well as Rakic comes forward to Persa. Persa has a go. And it goes just over the top. But, um, yeah, we'll, we'll see, won't we? We'll see. We're certainly put on a very good display here against Dynamo. It is only 1-0, of course. But uh, we've had 70% possession near enough. And uh, they have not troubled the goalkeeper, which is probably a good thing. Because I don't know that he's going to stop much. Um, so what do we say to that? Uh, do we keep saying no pressure? Or do we say don't get complacent now? Uh, let's let's go with don't get complacent. Uh, I think I was maybe a little bit guilty when we played Hajuk split and we got absolutely pounded in the second half. I think one of the, or if not the big mistake I made at half time was I think I kept saying there's no pressure on you here. And I think actually at that point at nil nil we probably needed to to be a little bit more. Oh, and there is a very close call. Uh, yeah, maybe need to be a little bit more. Like keep your heads down here, guys. You know it's only half time. You've done well, like, like that kind of a thing. Like we said here, um, because let's not forget they are going to have got an absolute rocket, aren't they, at half time? Because uh, I mean they're already struggling in the league by their standards, as that is just past the post. So for them to you know to lose against a team that let's not forget in their world, oh, Rovic Rovis has got an injury, does he? A twisted knee. So that's a shame because he's done really well. He's keeping Radjakovic out of the side right now as well. So. He is, he's doing very, very well. Um, but we'll give Radjakovic, uh Yeah, we, we saw what Radjakovic can do last year. He's absolutely fine to bring on, uh, you know, onto the field. But, um, yeah, Rovis is, is just taking his game to a different level. We certainly didn't see that much from him on loan last year. So that's great that uh, he's shown up and, and is taking his game up to uh, to a level where he looks like he's an elite level, elite uh, fullback or wingback at, uh, you know, in the, certainly at the level we're at in the league. But uh, anyway, this highlight's becoming a bit of a long one. Oh, and it's a collision at the back, and Zivkovic has made a save. But there are signs, aren't there, that this is uh, going a little bit wrong, second half for us, as that is cleared, and Persa completes the clearance. And here we go now with Gulji. And what can he do? Just hold up possession for us. Just couldn't quite manage to do it, could he? Um, I mean, we're getting on in this game here a little bit. 
It's what, 70th minute, Zevic on the ball. I wonder if this is where they figure out that Zevic isn't playing as a wide centre-back. Oh, we've given it away again. There's just signs we're getting a little bit sloppy here. Uh, Persa is working hard, which is good, but he's beaten a little bit too easily. In the end, Zivkovic does very, very nicely. That's that Grindavik form, isn't it? Uh, Philip not having a great game. We are a little bit thin up front as well right now, aren't we? Um, here we go with Philip to Dashka. Gets it wide for Bekenic. Bekenic. Oh, Radjakovic didn't really have much of a chance there. That is an effort. We'd like them to shoot from there. Uh, all right, so let's wonder if uh, we can take Philip off for... I'm wondering if we should bring uh, somebody a little bit more defensively minded on, but let's let's bring Pranjic on and see if he can do something for us. We'll keep praising them. Uh, I don't love that Radjakovic is looking nervous out there. He's not had a great game so far either. We'll give it a focus. We are getting very, very close to a massive, massive scalp. It is, of course, a Zagreb derby, of course, uh, as well. So Persa, oh, they went up back. Zabic can't quite keep possession for us. And are we going to get caught out? And late on, it's a good stop for Bakanic. It's still there, though. No! It's cleared, kind of, but not really. It's back in. And Zivkovic makes the save. Oh, it's too tense. All right, we're in the stoppage time. Let's uh, let's go and close, close up shop here. Let's get these guys just sitting back a little bit. And uh, we've just got to see it out from here, don't we? We've just got to make sure that we're doing little things right and we should he says be somewhat okay so let's play for set pieces and slow it down let's do all these sorts of things and uh yeah let's make sure we defend the corner properly in it comes near post Radjakovic hedges it clear come on boys oh hey not on the same wavelength not even on the same book I don't think never mind the same page as that is that we've beaten Dinamo Zagreb well it was supposed to be a sellout as well we kind of were clinging on at the end there let's not kid ourselves but let's hope that uh the full house seeing us do that that boosts the attendances up a little bit so suddenly we are uh what are we we are 11 points clear of Dinamo Zagreb we are eight points clear of Hajduk Split and we've got a nice healthy six points gap on uh, second place. It couldn't happen, could it? So Rovers is out five to six days. Tregrenich, seven to eight weeks. Injuries are beginning to mount here, aren't they? Um, so that could be what uh, what starts to scupper our uh, our bid to uh, to perhaps win a league here. Zivkovic did very well, didn't he? Let's be let's be fair to him as well. Really, really good stuff from him. Payich was quite good. He always is though, isn't he? And guys, that will do it for today. If you've enjoyed that, thumbs up. Subscribe if you're new. And um, well, we might be on a bit of a magical season here. Now, we did get our cup tie. It is a non-playable league side so that shouldn't be a problem for us injuries or not so what we might do is we'll come back somewhere around Oziek and uh, Hajuk uh, if there's a cup tie in there that looks juicy then we'll come back for that one as well uh, but if not uh, yeah that's what we'll come back for Oziek and Hajuk and guys let me know what you think in the comments is this going to be a year for the title I'm still doubtful Europe though is suddenly looking fairly good isn't it take care Hey guys, I'm Ozzy Villain, and welcome back to Yerun on the Impossible Dream. It is Season 3, Episode 2 today. We are, who are we playing? I can't remember who we're playing, but uh, it's, uh, who is we playing? 